How many answer the goddamn phone? Shit. Oh, I see now. First garage. I don't know what I should do. Yeah. Fucking yoink the trans out by itself and then the auto. Oh, no. No, cool. hell no. That's gonna be a pain in the ass to break the transmission yeah, we'll away from the motor. Yeah, we'll Some of that belt housing looks like it's gonna be a fucking nightmare, too. So let's, uh, let's get this out as one unit. Is the drive shaft out? Hey, hello. Hello, dickhead! What? I said is the drive shaft out! No, I took it out! That's what I said! So is it out? No, please! No, we are a simple innocent people have mercy on- no! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's out! Shifter linkage! Oh, yes, senor! Speedometer cable! Oh, yes, buzz! Hey! This thing stole my- Hey, God damn it! Hey, man, this thing stole my dollar! Oh shit! Holy shit, are you okay? Well, I wanted a Mountain Dew, but now I can't because, uh, when it stole my dollar. Oh, okay. So, uh, uh, yeah. Oh! Would you like me to dust for prints or semen or something? Maybe send it downtown to the boys in the lab? <laughs> alright, alright. Just I wanted a Mountain Dew is all. Well, now you can't now, can you? Now please! It's the goddamn speedometer cable out! Oh, yes, Buzz. Yes, can say, man, what give? Relax, lower your sword, shit. And besides, I made a mixtape. Oh, for fuck's sakes. And without any further ado, fashionably late, the 2023 metal vinyl tag. Where were we? Oh yeah, anyway. <laughs> so we're all sitting awkwardly in the living room, right, with our old man. He's just casually reading the paper, like nothing's going on. Meantime, her crazy mother is up there swearing and losing her shit. And that's when we heard her burst into the bathroom and screaming, Where's my fucking earrings? So Natasha freaks the fuck out, right? No doubt. But then she fires back, Mom, I'm in the can. I don't know where your fucking earrings are. And there's like a dead silence at this point. Father's not even batting an eye. But then, savagely ripping through the silence, <laughs> the mother responds, well, if it had a cock, you'd know. <laughs> <laughs> Followed by a loud door slam. And then, as if she already didn't launch a personalized heat seeker on Tasher, she bursts in again and drops one final verbal nuke before slamming the door and stomping off somewhere. What the hell did she say? I'd was it! Get this. Because you loves the cock! <laughs> Father's just sitting there, right? This is just Tuesday. <laughs> How old are you guys? I don't know, about 11 or 12. <laughs> oh man, you have lived the charm life. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, how are we going to do this? People are probably getting pissed. Are we each going to handle the question or are we going to take turns? Fuck no! We'll be here for 30 years! Yeah, but if we just show the records not jerk off with needless dialogue... No! We do this shit every time! No, man, that's Bush League! Let's each show one! Fuck! This is Vinyl Tag! It's a goddamn flexi meet and greet! No, man, too long! I gotta meet Susan at Alphonse's at 4! Look, again, we just show the records, keep a Cliff's Note style, no dicking around! No dicking around? Zero dickens, man! Succinct as F, swear to God! We'll see about that! You know, I'm an enabler, that's what I am! God damn it!
I wouldn't mind seeing Hell Patrol take on Demolition in their prime, man. No. In fact, that those pussies, the Von Erics. Yeah, the Von Erics. Okay, shit, I'll go first. You don't like except eat the heat? Is it because it's too spicy? Oh, bam! Strongly disagree with this right out of the gate. Oh, shut up, you face. Poor Udo. Fired from the band because he refused to go with the whole commercialized MTV shtick. Had a little bit too much integrity, I suppose. So the band turns around is all like, flip you, and goes and hires Mr. Yankee Blue Jeans, David Reese. Yeah, for about 15 minutes before they all got into a fist fight on stage. Oh, oh! Boy, did that ever leave a bad taste, gang. The band's street cred sullied in Germany. Whoa! Collectively appalled. I hated it. I love it. It's so greasy. It's pure shit. Hey, what's the matter with you? Because if you hate this album, you clearly don't understand getting rad on hot summer nights. Just drinking jock and cokes and cruising the strip for some white hot sniz on a Kawasaki Ninja, man. And you can believe that. Well, I'm going with Special Forces, Alice Cooper, 1981. Poor Alice was in a hazy fog of debilitating alcoholism at this point, and I think he was going through a second midlife crisis here. He literally looks like a dug-up corpse of an elderly Japanese prostitute, marionetted on stage in military garb, but doing his best to give us some proto... punk... New wave business. Terrifying. He literally looks like a meth whore. That old Special Forces band, man. What a look. Something out of an Italian post-apocalyptic neo-Nazi AA group. It is unsettling and sad. But funny as hell. And surprisingly addicting. And yeah, they are a killer band. I really came around to it, especially these Lost Years albums. Zipper, Dada, Flush. Love them. Good call. A bit on the nose here, but someone gotta do it. Kiss the Elder. Now it makes sense. Ah, the painful descent into irrelevance that I guess began in what? At uh, 79. Yeah. Tried too hard to be artistes, my dudes. Just a devastating art rock concept album that sadly resulted in old Ace hitting the bricks. That said, I am a sucker for a train wreck. And I'm never too proud to admit when I was wrong. Because Kiss the Elder, in the right mindset, demonstrates in spades that it is possible to polish a turd. <laughs> Boy thought, war and pain. Tasty! Seems childish and elitist, but I would literally murder anyone that didn't like Voivod. I think I said this before, but my family's from Jankir and I've spent many summers there. And for that reason, and that reason alone, I easily understand why Voivod is... Well, Voivod. Messiah Force, on the other hand, that remains one of life's many mysteries. Oh, they're good. They're fantastic. But not the Jankir vibe. Voivod is such a value combo too because you get the music first and foremost, you get the mythology, and you get a ways violently conceptualized sci-fi world building artwork, and on top of that you get a free font. <laughs> Which seriously, if anyone used for something like dissertation, <laughs> Oh, that would just crack me up. Uh, an analysis of how fashion contributes to global <laughs> human rights violations. <laughs> it's not funny. Fucking Joe Fresh. Yes, Joe Fresh was tragic. That was, that was horrible. That Joe Fresh incident was not funny at all. <sighs> no. The world is shit. Well, shit, I didn't mean to be a downer and all. Just thought maybe we should be a little bit more reverent and humble for what we have down here. But on a more positive note, Sodom. Agent Orange, AC-47 and 119's just raining down herbicidal warfare on Vietnamese villages. Look at this gatefold. Look at it. Magic Dragon. 6,000 shots per minute to a hill all level. Fuck you, Bob Dylan. That's some lyrics right there. And then you have Gnan Hines ghoulishly loving every second of the carnage. Here again, check it out. Kanan Hines. Help me out, everybody. Kanan Hines. Kanan Hines. I still want to say Narn Hines. That's the Anglo Saxon in you talking. Yeah, remember. Humble. Kanan Hines. Striper, soldiers under command. Now, for some, the war between heaven and hell. That's just a parable, a bedtime story. But for guys like BBQ here, well, it's tough to talk about. I get it. You lost a lot of great brothers down there. <sighs> Brothless. Rondwe, Salos, Leonard, he threw the best orgies. I hear you, and don't think for a second we don't appreciate, like, what you did. Oh, absolutely. I appreciate your sacrifices. Ha, huh, the yellow and black attack. I still wake up screaming. All right, I'm ready for it. Dave Mustaine. Oh, Davey, let me run my fingers <laughs> through your strawberry blonde locks. Get it out, that's right. Kiss, uh, kiss, hug, hug, Bullshit. Mm -hmm. So gay for you and your struggles. Listen, I can't think of anyone more inspiring, more infuriating, more divisive, or tenacious than Dave. Can you put a press on peace? Think about it. Oh, I know what you're saying, right? I can't help it. I love the Kool-Aid. And this is coming from a guy who really only likes the first three shithead era albums. And yeah, the fourth. Fuck. But he's still goddamn impressive. Prolific. And he is at his best when he's seething, which, which is a lot. 
Well, I'm not going to write a soliloquy like Gerard Depardieu over there. Uh, uh -huh. But I will say, slash a Dave, Acid Witch. Yeah. Come on. Lo fi Halloween and Christmas albums alone. Pure genius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right among us. A joy from start to finish. It might be their best. And that's my kind of artist. And I will go with Athenar of Midnight. The Midas touch on everything he does. Everything from the look, the sound, the pure gold, on point. And that White Spade album, man. Brilliant motorhead worship. Ha! Ah, you guys sound just as smitten as I do. Yeah, but our lower lip doesn't quiver when we talk about our dudes. Yeah, you just want to get in the hot tub with Dave. Just conditioning his hair with the finest of oh, yeah, herbs yeah, yeah, yeah. and minerals. <laughs> like I'm sure. <laughs> yes, that's right. I want to be in the tub with Dave Mustaine. Ooh, Dave. Idiots. Creator. What? Hold up. Yeah, I had a chance to see him in Reseda 99, I think. I remember priming way too hard on Jin, and I shit my pants. And they wouldn't let me in. You didn't see Creator? No. What? No, come on. Yeah. It's ridiculous. No, seriously. Well, <laughs> okay, technically, I did see them once through means of astral projection, and the help of a sweet 13-year-old girl named Nikisha, but- No, I didn't see them! But you think I'm just gonna say Creator? It's shameful. It's just everybody's seen Creator. Not everybody has seen Creator. Well, it's just pretty unbelievable. <laughs> Am I losing my mind here? Are you guys hearing that I'm saying that I don't know how to read, or like had three kids with Tori Amos or, or never tried fries? Because to me, where you're from, Creator sounds like they just ran walk-in clinics? I don't know. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Ah, exhumer for me. Fond memories of Thailand and my Shantana. A volatile tea girl prostitute. Just another day, just another man for her, said Father Francis at her eulogy. Arun, her pimp, callously echoed that statement. Coming off like a weak echo in a shallow flooded cave where not even fruit bats dared to go. But he showed up, and Arun seldom made appearances at his girls' funerals. But Shantana, she was a top bitch. That was crystal clear. But if I learned anything that day, it's this. Never, and I mean never ever have front row seating at a Black Mamba versus an inland Taipan fight. It's too unpredictable. And if you do, goddamn be sure that it's a reputable sanctioned fight, and not some alley beyond the Pataya floating market. Before her skin turned black and her tongue swelled, desperate for one last act of humanity, we were permitted to make love underneath a booth at a colorful tapestry stand. An unforgettable act of kindness from a store owner and his recently orphaned niece. We shared an iPod Nano in those last minutes, just listening to Zara and Darkstar, before her yellow bloodshot eyes rolled up into her head, and the darkness took her. So yeah, Exumer, for Shantana. Probably B.O.C. Exciter, heavy metal maniac. I love it, man, but not as much as violence and force. What's the moment with the lizard woman peeling her face off? Veiling the wicked. Yeah, I hate school rules. <laughs> I like that one. Anyways, Maniac, I can't drink when it's on. But don't I know it? Like, there's no drywall that's been able to withstand the force of my foot or fist. I totally chat out. Just John Claude, roundhouse kicking lamps, hutches, hutches, spray painting dicks on the side of the strip mall. Just an animal. That kind of energy. And let me just say, Evil Sinner is the best metal song ever written. Chicago, Probably being serious. I said ever. Living Death Metal Revolution. Oh, shit. Of course, my god. Thorsten Bergman's voice, man, he sounds an awful lot like Udo. If his vocal tracks were recorded like he was being thrown off a skyscraper. That's all I need to say. It's perfect. I feel that we don't talk enough about Living Death. Or darkness, for that matter. We have to correct this in the near distant future. I'd be remiss if I didn't. No, I mean, great call. Well, speaking of my Schnackers, Iron Angel, Hellish Crossfire. So, like, say I'm going to the Peelers that night. I don't want to feel fat in the champagne room. That is not an option. I'm talking Bowflex City. Two scoops of creatine in my way shake, an arm chuck roast on the foreman grill, and a discman singeing my existence with the speed and fury of hellish crossfire. That is my go-to. <laughs> I don't know, man. What about Winds of War? I kind of like it a little bit better. What? Are you looking for problems, Gunga Singa? Because if you are, it's going to take an awful lot more than Evil Sinner and your windmill kick. Because <laughs> that <laughs> shit right there <laughs> is bullshit. <laughs> I'm just joshing you for freak's Got sakes. Man. Well, I should hope so. I thought my nostrils were gonna flare off my face. You might want to lay off the creatine. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, here's an icy one. Slaughter Extroyas. 
winter kill. Oh boy. Everything about this is truly beyond comprehension. And for the most part, you're not going to have the right drugs. You're not going to have the right quantity. Sadly, you're not going to have the IQ necessary to appreciate this. <laughs> this work of musical genius. Believe me. And no judgment here. We aren't born knowing how to drive a car. Or knowing the times tables up to 12. It takes practice. Hell, some of us even need tutors. Just to get by. And that's no shame. It's just, I don't need you falling to pieces and shit in the bed when some of you out there realize that you're probably just meant to like croon on ghost and that's fine i love them too square hammer rats that's delightful anyways if you're just going to jump into the deep end at least get a floater board or something thank you dr peterson heavy load death of glory theatrical powerful triumphant and oh so swedish how swedish are they <laughs> this so swedish that they have a rich history of mythology and folklore to draw upon. High gain and icy melodies. Now is one of the few fortunate souls to encounter, battle, and defeat a polar bear on numerous occasions. I hate to nitpick, but a melee weapon, like a one-sided axe, this probably isn't the best course of action for a polar bear. Now after spending a lot of time hiding out with the Inuit, I learned a few things. Spears, and the longer the better. A Nick and a Nick suck learned the hard way. Good God, man, the losses we've had to endure. Lonely Hero, another dose of Swedish magic. A bold choice to carry the weight of the 1970s era heart fawn. The band's called Sad Wings. The album is Lonely Hero. What? No, that, that's stupid. It's on the top, I'm big and bold. Now it is Sad Wings. What? No, that can't be. I mean, from a layout and graphics art perspective, man, that's that's exceptionally stupid. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That's MF and Gary Sharp Young, man. The go-to art man for Mausoleum, Criminal Response, Ebony, and Axe Killer. Savage, Chateau, Demonized, Blade Runner, Saigon, Rankelson? You better park that tongue, son. Oh, I'm not saying it's him. God, no, but I know this business. I'm talking art department and layout. If this is true, you have made a fool of me, Criminal Response Records. And in front of all these nice people, a goddamn fool. Well, this brings up an interesting point right off the bat. Just who is the greenest band? Overkill or typo negative? Oh, shit. Oof, tough call. I gotta go overkill. I don't know, man. Typo negative kind of wore it on their sleeve. It's a good question. You know, I almost brought them up, but I felt that it might be a little bit too on the nose. So I picked Damascus. 1984, late to the party, new album. But better late than never and solid. Open your eyes, child. What a banger. It's a creepy cover, too. I went with Destruction Crack Brain. Fearless. Schmearless. Destruction down and out in Munich. Communication breakdown and bitterness takes over. I mean, this thing was dead in the water, but they tried to recoup the losses. So the band desperately re-record the vocals with Andre from Poltergeist. And I gotta tell you, I love it. Right down to the cover of Masharona. And let's face it, this art rules. I like that one, too. It's... They could have chosen worse. I so wanted to go with Raven Crash Bang Wallop, but the tit is, man. The tit is every time. And then there's the snake, man. Celtic Frost Emperor's Return. Now talk about a dude that's got his shit together. Someone said this was Norman Rockwell's last painting. Yeah, they killed him and ate him. And then poor Zarnia there had to shave it right down to the fiberglass. On account of the outbreak of head lice at the daycare where she worked. Gah. Pantera, I am the night. Ah, full-on ham session with a nice Terry glaze. I said it once and I'll say it again. Best Pantera. My Pantera. And not to be negative or obvious here, but like the Abbott boys, they got to be spinning in their graves. Like I imagine there's child predators out there that are able to look themselves in the mirror with less shame than Phil and Rex. And A2, Charlie? Come on. But I suppose you can only piss with the cock you got. Yeah, well, hopefully Van Halen will get the memo too and give us that Tony McAlpine and Justin Hawkins lineup we've been dreaming of. Oh. Anyway, my royal selection. Queen's Rack, Queen of the Rack. I mean, that's the one I wanted to grab just for the video alone because it actually makes our show look like Jedi. But I couldn't in good conscience leave out Saxon's love letter to the steam train. Princess of the night. How did a song about a train become probably one of the most enduring new album anthems? Are you naive? Is is that what's going on here? Yeah, okay, I had a hunch too. I mean, it's like Citizen Kane where Rosebud is a sled, but in reality it's all about, you know, butt stuff. Rosebud, his last words. You think Citizen Kane, the number one spot in the American Film Institute's best 100 movies, 
is about butt stuff. I do. Like this was just before the 20s, man. <laughs> a sled. No, sir. This is absurd. Well, what do you do with a sled? S you sit on it. Yeah. And go, f go for a ride. Yeah. On your rosebud. No. No, I'm not letting you do this to me. This is fried green tomatoes all over again. All I'm saying is that I think Princess of the Night is about a kid in his toy train. A train that means the world to him. Until one night, he loses his innocence. He becomes morbidly infatuated with an aging West Yorkshire streetwalker that he peeps on from his childhood window, and he does so every night. No, 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 no hooker brings the mail through the ice and snow. Castillo, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I can't. No, go on, please. Brings the mail home to him, his sexual awakening. Rain or shine, snow or sleet, she's out there like an iron horse. 20 years ago. Now time passes, she's long gone, and he's a man. All childish things get put away. Except one thing that he just can't part with. Something that he associates with her. His steam train. The bringer of manhood. The princess of the night. You're fucking with me, are you? It ticks all the boxes. Well, tick this box. Aerosmith, kings and queens. And screw anybody who shits on Aerosmith. Hey, who shits on Aerosmith? Literally, one of the coolest cats that ever lived. Oh, man, for sure. Bar none. One of the greatest regrets of my life was not learning an instrument and joining Aerosmith. Goddamn how different life would be for me if I was in Aerosmith. You know, you remind me a lot of Brad Whitford. A lot, actually. Not in the looks department, but... But your swagger, like the way you carry yourself, so Whitford. I can't believe anyone would shit on Aerosmith. I'm gonna cherish that Kunga Singa. I mean that. What an American treasure. Draw the line, daddy. Kings and Queens, probably one of the finest songs. I saw a pregnant woman do a slow dance on a blanket at the Piccadilly Pub to that Armageddon song back in 97. And then her water broke.